Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we're going to look at representability results on deformation problems. So we're going to look at some of the crucial results of the chapter, honestly, today. Um, first, a definition. Let's take two covariant functors, script D and D, on C sub lambda, where script D is a subfunctor of D, which means script D of A is in D of A for all A and C lambda, and for all F from A to B in C lambda, script D of F is just the restriction of D of F to script D of A. Okay, so this is just category theory terminology. We'll assume script D of K and D of K are the same, and they're both a singleton. And we'll say that script D and D is a relatively representable subfunctor if for all pairs of maps alpha from A to C and beta from B to C, the following square is Cartesian. So script D of A cross B over C from to script D of A cross script D of B over script D of C. So this is the map H we've been talking about for a while now. And then we have uh, containment of script D of A cross B over C and D of A cross B over C and another containment on the right here of script D of A cross script D of B and D of A cross D of B. And then we have another map H here from D of A cross B to D of A cross D of B and that map is also H. Okay, so if this commutes, then we're gonna say that script, uh, script D inside D is a relatively representable subfunctor. So its representability is essentially relative to the functor D. And we're going to justify that terminology right now with the proposition. So proposition nine, under the above setup, if script D and D is relatively representable and script D satisfies the properties uh, H sub I for I equals one through four from Schlesinger's theorem from last video, if D does, for each of the I separately, in fact. And the same is true for T sub K, the tangent space hypothesis and near representability. Okay, so if D is representable by a coefficient lambda algebra, let's say R sub D, and script D is representable by a quotient lambda algebra of that R sub script D. And so this is one of the main results in Schlesinger's paper. And this proposition obviously completely justifies our terminology. That is, it's definitely okay to call script D relatively representable because sort of its representability is sort of contingent on D's and very strongly related to it. Okay. Before we get into some of the main results of the chapter, let's recall some terminology. Let pi be a profinite group satisfying p finiteness. Let k be a finite field of characteristic p. Let lambda be a coefficient ring with residue field k. And let rho bar from pi to gln of k be a continuous representation. Recall that the absolute lambda deformation problem for rho bar is given by the study of the functor d rho bar from c hat lambda to sets. So here we're looking at coefficient lambda algebras. Okay, and what does this functor do? It associates to each coefficient lambda algebra B with residue field K, the set of deformations of rho bar to B, okay? So here are two of the main results I would say of the chapter. If A is a coefficient lambda algebra and N is a natural number, let A sub N be the Artinian quotient lambda algebra, uh, which is given by A mod the nth power of the maximal ideal of A. So proposition 10, we do have continuity here. Let rho from pi to gln of a be a lifting of rho bar to a coefficient lambda algebra a, and let rho sub n from pi to gln of a sub n be the induced continuous homomorphism for each natural number n. Then the functor d sub rho is continuous in the sense that we defined in a previous video, meaning d sub rho of b is the inverse limit over n of the d sub rho sub n's of b sub n's for all a augmented coefficient lambda algebras b. Okay. Moreover, d sub rho bar is also continuous in the same sense. Okay, so we have our functors um, kind of commuting with inverse limits as we lift further and further up the tree, right? So for a proof of this, you can see CSS page 280. So how about the absolute problem? Um, so in view of the proposition we just talked about, d sub rho, respectively d sub rho bar is representable if and only its restriction to C lambda of A of Artinian objects, uh, respectively to C sub lambda for the absolute problem is pro-representable. So how about the absolute problem? So let's look at proposition 11 here. We'll let rho bar now from pi to gln of k, so we're all the way down at the base field here, be a continuous residual representation where k is a finite residue field of characteristic p and pi is a profinite group satisfying p finiteness. Let lambda be a coefficient ring with residue field k. Then two things are true. d sub rho bar restricted to c lambda does satisfy hi for i equals one, two, and three. Okay, so we're gonna have a pro-representable hull. And two, if rho bar is absolutely irreducible, then d sub rho bar is representable. That's kind of one of the crucial results, if not maybe the main crucial result of this chapter. Okay, 
And so this is where you need Schlesinger's theorem to prove this, this representability of this absolute problem here. Okay, and also Mazur's original paper on deformation theory is a good source for a proof of this. Okay, so how about near representability? So we're gonna break this into proposition 12 and 13, although it, it'll be very clear that proposition 13 implies proposition 12, but uh, proposition 13 is much, much more difficult to prove. So we'll state them separately. So proposition 12 is weak near representability. For every Artinian coefficient lambda algebra A and every lifting rho from pi to gln of A of rho bar to A, the relative functor d sub rho is nearly representable. Perfect, okay? And then strong near representability for every coefficient lambda algebra A and every lift rho from pi to gln of A of rho bar to A, the relative functor d sub rho is also nearly representable. So you don't, you can basically remove the word Artinian here, okay? So for a proof, you can see CSS page 282. And again, the proof of weak near representability requires a condition called weak finiteness, which we'll talk about later. And the proof of strong near representability uses a condition called strong finiteness, which we'll also explain later. Um, and again, the strong statement is just quite a bit harder to prove. So it's maybe worth listing them separately. Okay. And the other thing is um, uh, the weak statement is actually all we really need. So, all right. Uh, here's, I guess, another main result of the chapter in some sense. So proposition 14 if rho bar is absolutely irreducible and R is the universal coefficient lambda algebra representing D sub rho bar, which exists by the proposition 11, then for every lifting rho from pi to gln of A of rho bar to any coefficient lambda algebra A, which satisfies the so-called minimality property that A is generated by the traces of rho, that should sound familiar. Um, if you go back to chapter one of my notes, we had functors uh, whose images were generated by the traces of Frobenius at various primes. So we're kind of generalizing that here. Okay, uh, then D sub rho is pro-representable by the A augmented coefficient algebra R. Okay, so uh, what I mean by that is for each A augmented coefficient lambda algebra B, there's a natural bijection between the set of deformations of rho to B and the set of A augmented coefficient lambda algebra homomorphisms from R to B. So in other words, R has the correct universal property that it commutes all the lifting triangles that we want it to. Okay, so for a proof of this, you can see Cornell, Silverman, Stevens, page 283. And we'll get into more of these finiteness conditions next video. So I'll see you then. And thanks for watching.